getting the most out of your relationship uh, may seem a bit of an odd, odd thing to say, but a lot of the guys that fall on problems in their relationships have created many of the issues they've got, but also they've allowed the problems to go from being a minor irritant to something that does your head in on a regular basis. Everything comes down to communication. What do you want out of a relationship? You know, because a lot of guys go to the Philippines and they'll marry the most, you know, attractive woman that they met or whatever, but they haven't thought beyond it. And I've got into this conversation before. So what do you mean the woman should cook? What, so she should have to cook for you? No, the ability is to cook for herself um, because it shows independence. It shows the ability to get off her backside off the sofa and actually do something. Um, because a lot of women that marry foreigners that are useless. Um, they lack many skills that are normally hereditary in a family unit um which is why they fall in problems you know they they haven't had the right information transferred from mother to child etc etc that is natural instincts etc that and a natural process of learning um our former nanny for example the mother of her um was a prolific thief and she encouraged her children to steal for her. Um, but also, when you look at the bigger unit, I think she had about 10 kids. Her sister was supporting her. So you got a lazy woman who sits at home, encourages her children to steal, while she's out, her sister's out making money overseas to pay for this woman that can't keep her legs shut. These are the reasons you need to be a little bit more fussy than, oh, she's beautiful. She, she's the most stunning woman I've ever seen. There's plenty of attractive women out there, but um, I mean, I, I, it's not, it should never be just about a physical attraction. You've got, you got to sit there and think, what do I want out of the relationship? I want to be able to travel. So, okay, partner, before we get married, subjects of discussion are, what do you want to do with your life? Um, but also, if I come to the Philippines, I want to travel around the islands, I want to travel around Asia. Um, would you have a problem with me going off backpacking if you, you, you don't want to go, etc.? Those sort of discussions, because otherwise, they're all like, it's dangerous, you shouldn't go there alone, you shouldn't. They're all constantly trying to talk you out of things. So you have to think, I want to travel. So, okay, I'll put that on my list, we need to discuss that. And also, what she wants to do on the travel side. Because you're trying to make it a relationship. Cooking. Does she cook? Can she cook? Does she want to learn how to cook if she can't? What sort of cooking can she do? Is she willing to adapt to your life? Or is she going to expect you to be in uh, soy sauce, rice with noodles or whatever? Because she refuses to adapt to a Western flavor. I've seen it. I've seen some women go, oh, I can't eat Western food. And I'm like, well, the guy pays the bill. And why should he be in what dried fish and stuff when you're refusing to even try to eat what he does? Because when you go out, you're quite happy to go to Jollibee and eat bloody burgers. Then <laughs> you've got to adapt. You've got to have it both ways. You've got to say, okay, like me, I like chicken with soy sauce and rice. Not every day, but you know, I'm quite happy to eat that. But the point is, you meet halfway. You've got to be able to do it halfway. This is why the relationships function. Where does your wife want to be in 10 years' time? Does she want to be sat in the Philippines? Does she want to be sat in the US, UK, whatever? What does she actually want to do? The reason this is important, because if you're going for retirement, you're thinking, I'm going to sit in the Philippines and just live here for the, until I uh, pass away. She may be thinking... I don't want to do that. And this is where you start getting compatibility issues because she um, may seem all happy on the surface, but underneath she's not 100% happy with you um, because she wasn't looking for that relationship. And she'll put up with it because in the, the day you paid all the bills and everything. doesn't mean she's happy with you though. And you're trying to create a relationship that's of, of value to both of you. 
um, because if it's got value to both of you it cuts down the risks of something severely going wrong because she would rather protect you than be the one putting poison in your food so you have to look at that what does she want to achieve hey does she want children there's a there's a prime example does she want any kids you may not want any kids because you're getting on a bit but what if she does how do you deal with that maybe she wants to go and work at the local school or the hospital or a factory so she's got her own independence do you have an issue with her going to work because some people do um, my wife was um, working in a office before and I had no issue with my wife working but the whole point is I come home and she'd be gone most of the day she'd be 12 hours a day because there's eight hours work plus the travel because they're traveling to and from Cebu City every day it's not an easy feat um, at rush hour so you think well does my wife want to continue doing that it's up to her I'm just saying that I'm not going to sit at home all day if, if she wants to do that I'm going to go off on my motorbike and disappear off to the uh, uh, mob wall or something I'm, I'm not going to sit here we should be all right with that you, you're trying to say what let's set some guidelines here so that we know what does and doesn't work for us I don't want to come home after being at the beach all day um, because you've been at work and I've come home and I'm getting earache oh what women were you with and all this I was only at the beach I just went down the beach doing nothing all day that's the whole point I've just gone to have a day off I actually enjoy the motorbike ride to the beach because it's about three hours ride and then three hours back so I've only spent like an hour or so on the beach uh, you know because you stop for lunch on the way get to the beach get a bit hot get back on the bike and head home so you've got to see where the relationship's going to fail or going to work one of the key elements is conversation a lot of the women that are with some of these guys there is no conversation there, there's nothing you see them when they sit the, the women are sat over here, the guys are sat over here, and there's nothing connecting them. There's, it's as if it's like a group, two different groups. Like it's going to like a, um, a works party, and you turn up, and there's uh, John Smith's company over here, and Bill Bailey over here. They're just completely independent, as if they're not even associated with each other. It's sometimes like that, and you're thinking, that's not a relationship. That, that's, not, that's dysfunctional. It's okay for people to meet up with other people, but the, the whole thing should be an engagement with everybody. It shouldn't be a separation. You do get it with classes, though, because some of the guys marry girls all their night, shall we say. Um, most Filipino women I know would not associate with those women. It's been, they do not want to sit with them. They do not associate with them. Not only from the fact that they... Um, are from a different social class but also is the use of foul language smoking and other stuff and talking about their husband's sexual habits um, yes they do when, when they're sat together they do talk about you and they tell you tell the, the other women about everything right down to your sexual things your what you enjoy they do talk about that <laughs> may shock some of you but they do um but the you will find in that social group people that are from college university working in a office environment factory environment but doesn't really matter they're more of what would possibly be the philippines middle class would not want to associate with those people and that's where you get the oil and water effect because what happens with expats expats are just expats you know you're not really interested what they get up to in their home life and this is where from our point of view we're quite disconnected from those issues because they're nothing to do with us um, but from the social classes within the Philippines it is a complex one and one where they want to disassociate with people from a different social class um, you don't have to like it it's just true um, now so you got your relationship and you got that so what are you going to talk about what what key elements in your relationship have you got an understanding of that actually makes a relationship work I know people go oh yeah but we've got a good uh, sex life and all that. 
that's a very small part of your life in the Philippines. This is why boredom is one of the big causes of alcoholism and other stupid things that happen to expats because they've got nothing to fill the day with. So having something of a common interest keeps you busy. Me, I like construction. So I'm quite happily plodding around, messing around, wiring up things and doing things around the house. That, that stuff I like doing. Uh, in the same way, I like well, learning new things. So uh, welding or going to see how people fabricate jeepneys and stuff. That interests me. How to weave furniture. Um, I like seeing what the locals get up to. That It fascinates me. How a, a guy changing a tire will heat up the plastic using a little fire, uh, the, uh, the tube with a little fire and stuff. I find it interesting. I know how to fill my day. As a couple, we do things like we go to airsoft tournaments. Um, we went up to ABS CBN a couple of times up in Manila. Um, we have similar tastes in music. We both enjoy good food. We generally have enough to fill the day out just talking. We have a very, very close relationship because we're very similar in, in many ways. Um, that's that's what you're looking for. You're looking for some sort of connection. That, because, like I said, there's beautiful women everywhere. But if you can actually find somebody with a similar interest, then you, you've, you've just gone from a relationship that will start to slow down after six months to a relationship that could last the next 20 years um, or even longer because there's some similar interest in there. Um You've got to understand where the other person's coming from. There's the whole yes concept that happens throughout Asia. It's not just the Philippines. I get it when I'm out in the Middle East. Do you know how to do this? Yes. And then the, next, the guy's trying to electrocute himself because he has no idea. Um, people will agree with you. If you say, I like photography. Yeah, I like photography. I like eating steak. Yeah, I like eating steak. What steak have you eaten? Where do you eat steak? I have never eaten steak. Is that sort of thing? You go, what the? You've got to go a little bit deeper. If they say, I like photography, what do you like about it? Um, taking pictures. Can you show me some of the pictures? Well, what's your favorite pictures? You know, you've got to expand on it to see if they're actually lying. Because it's not, they're not doing it to be negative, they're doing it to agree with you. Um, this is, it's very strange, but people just want to, it's sort of like make you happy. So as such, they will just agree with you. But it gets very, very boring, very fast when you're with each other 24 seven. So you've got to go, okay, what are we going to do then? Um, we have no hobbies, no interests in common. What do you want to do? Oh, I've always wanted to become a nurse. Okay check her education is she smart enough to become a nurse um if she is put her through college keep her happy um in the same way if you've got other things that are of a similar thing where i want to be a dentist uh, i want to i want to have my own little boutique or a little cafe or something if people are content and busy then everything runs very smoothly but if you get involved in a business be aware that there's no such thing as a business you can just leave to run itself um, not physically in the Philippines <laughs> um, you will find people will rip you off you'll find there's dealing with permits you've got the problems with um, suppliers changing prices all that sort of stuff so you've got to be bear in mind that if you're going to do it treat it as a real business but also it may be worth putting your partner through some training first before she goes and doesn't understand this separation of money in her hand to stock. So that if she's got 2,000 pesos in her pocket, that she understands that 1,200 of that was actually the stock that was behind her on the shelf. So she's got to put that back. She hasn't made 2,000 profits. She's made 800 and then the running costs of the building are taken out of that. So she may have made 300. So you've got to understand it because a lot of people don't. They think I've got 2000 pesos. There's no connection that the stuff on the shelf was the stuff that was sold. It's got to be put back. That's your stock. It's why 
things dwindle so quickly in many businesses. Utang. Utang is when you give somebody credit. Don't offer anybody credit, ever. It's it's just not worth the hassle. Because even when you get it back and sometimes they begrudge you because you may have made them pay you back and now they've been embarrassed or something else and they hate you for it. It's mentality issues. Don't get into that. I've mentioned this about handbags the other day about the credit with the handbags. You're not actually giving the credit because you may actually give um, some stock to somebody, but as soon as they start paying you back, uh, you start. Um, see, how I work it is I'll say buy 20,000 pesos worth of stock. I'll then give the stock to people at 3,000 each. Um, but the first handbags they can't sell unless they've got money. So they can take them and then bring them back and then say, this woman wants to buy this one. So they bring the 3,000 pesos or whatever the cost of the handbag. They'll, they'll bring that money back to me. And then that handbag is then given to the woman until they've actually built up a bit of stock themselves. Because <clears throat> obviously I won't actually take any profit out the the, the first um batches because the whole idea is that this guy is sold the handbags for three three thousand the the bags cost me fifteen hundred so he's got fifteen hundred in money but he doesn't get the money he gets another handbag so he ends up with say ten handbags and once he reaches that he's now dealing with it himself because obviously he's got no profit coming in on the bags so you've got to bear in mind his responsibility is getting the money off his customers but the initial risk for me is i give these people i trust handbags um but they're not actually selling them they're bringing the money back then they're selling the redistributing the handbag after that so that it's paid for up front then you start getting into the people that are paying 300 pesos a month or whatever but that's their problem because they've got some stock that they're they're ahead of the game anyway so yeah, it's complicated, it's complicated. But anyway, we're moving on. So the relationship, you've just got to make sure will function. And you just go over these things. You sit there with a pen and paper and go, right, what we got in common? What we're going to do? How am I going to fill my day? Um, what does she do that makes the relationship work? What is it that makes the relationship work? Um, just because she's pretty doesn't make the relationship. I've seen enough expats that are so miserable because they've got a pretty woman, but at the same time, that same pretty woman doesn't even talk to them to half the day. Though there's your dinner, there's your breakfast. Uh, text, text, text. Hi. Yeah, I'm stuck at home with the old fart again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't even know why they got in those relationships. And this is why I always say the, the women over the 25 limit they're much better women. They're more switched on, they're less immature, etc, etc. Anyway, thanks for watching.